Welcome to the Role of the Priests in the Kingdom of the Divine Will. From the Writings of the Little Daughter of the Divine Will, Louisa Picaretta. On the bottom of the cover it says, quote, I am preparing for you an era of love, the era of my third fiat. End quote. From Jesus to Louisa on February 8, 1921. The inside cover page is titled Holy Orders. Others are called to share specially in Christ's priesthood. In the Old Covenant, even though Israel was a kingdom of priests, this found in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, the Lord called certain men to a special priestly ministry. This found in Exodus chapter 19, verse 22. In the New Covenant, even though Christians are a kingdom of priests, this found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus called certain men to a special priestly ministry. This found in Romans chapter 15, verses 15 through 16. This sacrament is called Holy Orders. Through it, priests are ordained and empowered to serve the Church. This found in the second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Priests are ordained and empowered to serve the Church as pastors, teachers, and spiritual fathers who heal, feed, and strengthen God's people, especially through preaching and the administration of the sacraments. A second passage is found from Our Lady of Revelation, February 21st, 1948. Quote, Priests, your works are to be according to the will of Christ. You have to completely dedicate yourself to the altar and to guide souls for the glory of the Father with the effective help of the Holy Spirit. End quote. Page 1 Table of Contents Part 1. Who is Louisa? Part 1 contains three subsections. Part 2. Priests Part 2 contains two subsections. Part 3. People pertaining to Louisa Part 3 contains six subsections. Part 4. Documents and Dates Part 4 contains four subsections. Part 5. Prayers Part 5 contains four subsections. Part 6. Oratory of St. Philip Neri Page 2 shows a picture entitled Jesus, the Great High Priest. It is in the form of an icon. Below it is a writing from St. John Chrysostom from a section entitled The Priesthood, Chapter 3, Verse 5, written in A.D. 387. Quote, Priests have received a power which God has given neither to angels nor to archangels. It was said to them, 
Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose shall be loosed. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 Temporal rulers have indeed the power of binding, but they can only bind the body. Priests, in contrast, can bind with a bond which pertains to the soul itself and transcends the very heavens. Did God not give them all the powers of heaven? Whose sins you shall forgive, he says, they are forgiven them. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. John chapter 20 verse 23 What greater power is there than this? The Father has given all judgment to the Son. John chapter 5 verse 22 And now I see the Son placing all this power in the hands of men. Volume 10 from the Book of Heaven, January 28, 1911 Quote, I supplicate that they make these houses of reunion, saving for me the priests, who shall come into these shelters, and through these few good ones shall my church recover from her agony. End quote. Part 1. Who is Louisa? The following is a quote from the Book of Heaven. Jesus to Louisa, Volume 17, May 4th, 1925 Mission of Louisa The mission of my will shall conceal the Most Holy Trinity upon earth, just as in heaven there are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, inseparable but distinct among themselves, who form all the beatitude of heaven. In the same way, on earth, there shall be three persons, who, because of their missions, shall be distinct and inseparable among themselves. The Virgin, with her maternity, which conceals the paternity of the Celestial Father and encloses his power in order to fulfill her mission of Mother of the Eternal Word and Co-Redemptrix of Mankind. My humanity for the mission of Redeemer, which was enclosed in the divinity of the Word, without ever separating from the Father and from the Holy Spirit, in order to manifest my celestial wisdom, adding the bond of becoming inseparable from my mamma. And you, Louisa, for the mission of my divine will, as the Holy Spirit shall display his love in you, manifesting to you his secrets the prodigies of my will, the goods it contains, in order to make happy those who shall give themselves to knowing how much good this supreme will contains, to love it and to let it reign in their midst, offering their souls to let it dwell within their hearts, that it may be able to form its life in them. 
and the bond of inseparability shall be added between you, the Mother, and the Eternal Word. These three missions are distinct and inseparable. The first two have prepared the graces, the light, the work, and everything with unheard of pains. For the third mission of my will, in order to be all fused in it without leaving their office, so as to find rest, because my will alone is celestial rest. Here endeth the lesson from Volume 17, May 4th, 1925. Fiat. John, chapter 16, verse 13. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he shall guide you to all truth. He shall not speak on his own, but he shall speak what he hears, and shall declare to you the things that are coming. Next, a quote from St. Anibale de Francia. Quote, he, Jesus, calls Louisa, the littlest one that he found on earth, the instrument of a mission so sublime that no other can be compared to it, that is, the triumph of the divine will upon the whole earth, in conformity with what is said in the Our Father. Fiat voluntas tua. Sicut in cello et in terra. End quote. From Father Bernardino Bucci, Order of the Franciscan Miners Capuchins, Volume 2, Personal Reflections on the Writings of Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta. Because Mary was so privileged, Possessing all possible graces, unique in the mind of God, unique in history, the Lord did not want to leave her without the assistance of priestly authority until her dying breath. This had never been provided to any other creature, because none had ever had such fullness of grace, therefore such custody had not been necessary. Only to one other creature had this priestly assistance been given, one chosen in our time, Luisa Picaretta. These are the words of the Lord to Luisa. Now, my daughter, you too are unique in my mind, and will also be unique in history, and there will not be either before or after you, another creature for whom I will dispose, as though forced by necessity, the assistance of my priests. Having chosen you in order to deposit in you the sanctity, the goods, the effects, the attitude of my supreme will, it was appropriate, just, decorous, for the very sanctity that my will contains, that a priest of mine should assist you and be the first depository of the goods which my will contains, so as to let them pass from his lap into the whole body of the church. What great attention is required of you and of them! This passage is from Volume 15, July 11th, 1923. Father Bucci continues. Further, the Lord adds that he wanted to enrich Louisa with as many gifts to make her capable of receiving the gift of the divine will, and said to have taken from her the seed of corruption. He has purified her soul has purified her human nature, so that she no longer feels the things of this earth. 
She belongs entirely to God. The Most Blessed Trinity thrice has decided to act ad extra. The first was in creation, when there was no need of created beings to bring it about. The second was in redemption, and the Lord chose the collaboration of a woman, the most holy, the most beautiful woman who became the mother of God, channel and instrument of God, until such time as the work of redemption should come to pass. The third is the fulfillment of God's divine will, that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the seal of the work of creation and of redemption. These are divine decrees that must come to full completion, and God makes use of another woman to put these things in order. Thus says the Lord to Louisa, Therefore, just as we entrusted our mamma to St. John, that she might deposit in him and from him into the church, the treasures, the graces, and all of my teachings, which I had deposited in her during the course of my life, when she was entrusted to me, and I acted as priest to her. As I deposited in her, as in a sanctuary, all the laws, the precepts, and the doctrines which the church was to possess. And she, faithful as she was, and jealous of even one word of mine, deposited them in my faithful disciple John, so that they might not be lost. And therefore my mamma has primacy over the whole church. So I have done with you, Louisa. Since the fiat voluntas tua must serve the whole church, I entrusted you to a priest of mine, that you may deposit in him everything I manifest to you about my will, the goods contained in it, how the creature must enter into it, and how the paternal goodness wants to open another era of grace, placing his goods, which he possesses in heaven, in common with the creature, and giving back to her the lost happiness. This lesson from Volume 15, July 11th, 1923. Fiat. We now arrive at the first subsection entitled The Little Daughter of the Divine Will with important quotes. The first quote is from Padre Bucci. God calls one creature to be the first in this event, the first fruit of a new era. His little daughter in the divine will, the newborn of the divine will, Luisa Picaretta, called by all with prophetic voice, Luisa La Santa. The next quote comes from the Book of Heaven, Volume 16, November 10th, 1923. Luisa, little one through whom Jesus was to make man return to his beginning, to his origin, to his lost nobility, to the bonds of his will. And now from the postulation for the cause of beatification and canonization of Luisa Picaretta. Luisa Picaretta was born in Corrado, province of Bari, Italy, on April 23, 1865. She was baptized in the Mother Church and there received the first sacraments in 1874. When she was eleven, she became a daughter of Mary, and as a teenager, a third-order Dominican. 
She received only a first grade education and was called to serve our Lord as a victim soul at the tender age of 16. On February 2, 1899, she was given the obedience by her spiritual director to begin a diary of her spiritual experiences, which she continued until 1938. Thirty-six notebooks, which detail her intimate rapport with heaven. The following section in parentheses. In 1996, through the office of Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, Pope John Paul II permitted the copying of the original volumes of Louisa that were contained in Vatican archives. It took four days, ending on February 2, 1996, the feast day of the presentation of our Lord, a feast day of light, quote, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel, end quote, from Luke chapter 2, verse 32, and the end of the parentheses. In 1926, she wrote her autobiography under obedience to her extraordinary spiritual director and censor of her writings, Saint Anibale Maria de Francia. Her bed was her cell, her room her chapel, and her bed her cross. The word which gave her life was God's own creative word, fiat. When she spoke, it was only briefly, but very wisely. The example and counsel she gave was always illuminating. Carrying invisibly the wounds of our Lord in her own crucified body, made her a rare victim of intercession for mankind for more than 60 years, and without any physical illness. Her nourishment for the most part of her life consisted of God's most holy will and the Eucharist. Louisa, precursor of the sanctifying third fiat, chosen by God for the holy mission of proclaiming God's kingdom, his will now done on earth as it is in heaven, was called into the fullness of that kingdom on March 4, 1947. On November 20, 1994, in the Mother Church of Corato, Monsignor Carmelo Cassati, M.S.C., Archbishop of Trani, Barletta, Bisceglie, having received the non obstare from the Holy See, blessed the opening of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, secular Third Order Dominican with the Archbishop himself as President of the Ecclesiastical Tribunal, joined by enthusiastic faithful from southern Italy and from around the world, Louisa began her triumphal journey toward the honors of the altar. Whoever has received particular graces attributed to the intercession of the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, is requested to write to Postulation for the Cause of Beatification, Luisa Picaretta, Palazzo Archivescovile, 70059, Trani, parentheses, capital B, capital A, Closed parentheses, Italy.
Important Quotes Carmelo Cassati, MSC, Archbishop 50th Anniversary of the Transit to Heaven of the Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, 1947-1997 to Quote Fifty years after her death, the writings of Louisa are more than alive in the souls who follow her from one end of the earth to the other. Souls draw from the crystal clear doctrine of the divine will a lesson of sanctity that spreads its roots in the will of God as life in man and as complete fulfillment of the prayer of the Our Father, thy will be done like on earth as it is in heaven. End quote. Cardinal Jose Saraiva Martin, Prefect of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. Corato. April 23rd, 2015 Fourth International Congress on the Servant of God Luisa Picaretta on the occasion of the 150th anniversary of her birth. Church in the Divine Will Quote Luisa has received the gift of divine life. Here has been sowed the precious seed of the very holiness of Jesus, given to her so that it would germinate in her life in conformity to the divine volition of Jesus in her daily acts, made of prayer, work, and so many encounters. Louisa has lived the ordinariness of life in the continuous tension of asking even in the smallest of her acts the presence of Jesus. To give the Father the glory, the praise, and the adoration that all men should give him, and that Louisa has done always and for all. End quote. Saint Anibale Maria de Francia, Messina, Italy, June twentieth, nineteen twenty four. Quote These are writings that must now be made known to the world. I believe they will produce great good. For as sublime as this science of the divine will is, so do these writings of divine dictation present it clearly and limpidly. In my opinion, no human intellect would have been able to form them. End quote. Monsignor Giovanni Battista Picchieri, Archbishop of Trani, Barletta, Biscaglie, Titolare of Nazareth Holy Sacrifice of the Mass Closing of Diocesan Phase of the Cause of Beatification and Canonization of the Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta Homily The Mother Church Corato, October 29, 2005 Quote, we give thanks that there are here today so many brothers and sisters from churches in Italy and from churches abroad, all gathered together in this holy mass to give thanks and praise to the Holy Trinity for the gift of our servant of God. Luisa Picaretta, daughter of this blessed land of Corotto, and daughter of the Church of Trani, Barletta, Biscaglie. She, 
who in the years of her terrestrial life, April 23, 1865, through March 4, 1947, radiated the light of the risen Christ in her permanent state of suffering. As St. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul's Letter to the Galatians, Chapter 2, Verse 20 we also pray to the Holy Trinity that her glorification in the role as servant of God, as proclaimed by the supreme authority of the Church, will make the idea of living in the will of God well known to everybody. Like Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise be for the progress of a Christian life to the glory of God and his kingdom. End quote. Padre Bernardino Giuseppe Bucci, OFM, promoter of the faith and member of the Ecclesiastical Diocesan Tribunal for the cause of beatification of the servant of God, Luisa Picoretta, author of many books on the life of Luisa, co-founder of the Association of the Divine Will. Quote, In the new millennium, the world and the church are going to focus on Luisa Picoretta and the divine will. End quote. Quote, Luisa is not just a saint. She is the saint. End quote. Quote, All the world will become Catholic. Luisa is the starting point. Always remember this. End quote. Here ends Lesson 1 of Part 1, Who is Louisa? Fiat.